If I'm a minerals company in the Permian and, I, you know, you look at some of the larger portfolios have started to exit or there's some bigger players out there that still have dry powder or, or, or if you're smaller down the food chain, regardless, Permian is the lane you've picked. And there's a lot of folks who are saying, OK, what's what's the next angle? What's the next play? Um, do you think there's some sort of broader ESG strategy to ride as a mineral company. Um, what, what I'm getting at is from the university lands perspective, is it still too early to detect behavioral or, or operational pattern changes from ESG incentivized uh, policies? Is there an, a reward in the capital markets which signals certain types of behavior yet? There's so much scrutiny around it. There's so much investment going into it. As you mentioned with the sustainability reports and everything, I think the one challenge is unless it ends up being more efficient uh, and improves your margin on the bottom line, it's st you still can get beat up on your stock. Y you're not necessarily getting um, you know, differentiated cost of capital or access to capital. I think you know, the, the SLU enterprise, right? One of the ideas they have is to have a non-venting rating mm -hmm. on the 1280 units, which, you know, the development plan will you have the engineering design in there so that the methane emissions are down. And, and that's kind of a ground up, more transparent unit by unit approach to say to investors, if you want to invest in something with this, it ticks these boxes. And there's been a really good response from pensions in Europe around that. Um, but I, I have empathy for the larger companies. It's really kind of damn if you do, damn if you don't. But there's an inflection point at, at, at some level. You can't ignore it. Um, have you started to see it? Was there increases in revenue? Um, anything from a minerals buying perspective that you think would be worthwhile to keep your eye on? Yeah, I, I don't think we have the answer yet. Um, and I, I just to uh, add on to the comment about SOU, I think the tagline, at least when I was there, was, no e &P company is clean, but an individual 1,280-acre unit can be clean. Um, I think that the companies are working hard to clean themselves up. If I were, if I were your kind of core market, the, the, the commercial minerals and royalty investor who, who's an active buyer and seller, I think that um, I think there's a couple of thoughts I'd have. One is this is just a subset of the idea that some operators are better than others. So who's the operator is a, is a meaningful consideration when you're valuing um, whether to acquire a position or, or to divest a position and, and, and what the fair price is. And so we, we've tended historically to think about who's the operator in terms of technical factors like who drills the best wells, you know, normalized for resource quality. I think this just extends to it in terms of, if you do a really good job on flaring and methane, there's a there's a 10%, maybe there's a five or 10% uplift on gas volumes. And at, at $4 or 450, you know, Henry Hub, um, that can matter. I mean, that could that can be that can show up in the bottom right hand corner of your spreadsheet. The the area that is potentially more promising but but unproven um, is is the idea of certification. And, and price premiums. So mm. there's a big effort underway to certify gas as being sustainably produced. And it's a little bit of a wild west. There are several organizations doing it. They use slightly different methodologies. Um, it's being driven by um, international buyers, particularly the French who, who are anti-fracking. And so they, they, you know, there's, there's, a, there's, a, there's an interest group that wants to say, that all the LNG imported to France from the U.S. is, you know, meets some spec. I'm not exactly sure what that spec is. It could be it's all from vertical wells that were drilled before 1990, or it's all drilled from wells that were fracked but were not fracked with fresh water, or whatever, you know, whatever the performance spec is. I think it's, it's, um, it's a rapidly evolving thing. Or domestically, you know, there's a big, a big market for, uh, for natural gas is the electric utility. Sorry, the, the the natural gas distribution 
utility, um, and even some industrial uh, companies that will want to say that this gas is responsibly sourced. It's it's the the the, the agencies that are doing this are you know they're borrowing a, a little bit from kind of the conflict minerals world. Um, you know, minimizing you know one of the companies, Equal Origin, has its roots in oil and gas development in the Andes, where there was a lot of concern on the part of NGOs about disruption of indigenous societies. So, so this is the, the effort. I don't, I don't, I'm not going to claim to know where it's going to end, but, but a lot of calories are being put into trying defining and measuring what it means to develop the gas in an environmentally responsible way. And there's the possibility, I, I wouldn't say it's a certainty, but there's a possibility of the emergence of a two-tiered pricing system. Um, and, and then probably tier one will drive out tier two. I mean, I'm old enough to remember when unleaded gasoline first came in and you'd have leaded and unleaded side by side and then eventually, you know, lead exited altogether. Um, so it, it may be that, that um, and in the case, you know, because of the way decline works, I mean, the vast majority of natural gas produced in this country is coming from wells that have been drilled in the last seven years. So if you, we want you to start on this wave, you know, over time, if, if all the new wells are, are certified, then just the algebra is such that the amount of gas that's certified will ultimately be, you know, asymptotically approach 100% of the, of the market.